The MCU is back and weirder than ever. Thanks to the slow burn sitcom mystery of WandaVision, this hit Disney Plus series has fans feverishly speculating about who's behind the TV tropes, taking over the small town of Westview, how is Vision back in the land of the living, and is Wanda Maximoff still an Avenger at heart, or is she about to become the big bat of the Marvel Cinematic Universe during Phase 4? But as you know, we have plenty of theories of our own, and we've strapped on our finest vibranium foil hat to try and get to the bottom of what's really going on in One Division thus far, as well as everything we know about One Division season two. With that said, in order to talk about these theories at length, we do have to spoil the first three episodes of One Division. So if you haven't watched them yet, please take a page out of Geraldine's book and find the nearest exit. But before we get into this video, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel with notifications on so you don't miss any of the new videos that we post. All right, so what's really going on here? Well, the way we see it, there are three primary possibilities, each with their own variations, which seem like the most likely answer for the many mysteries of WandaVision thus far. Now, there will be some crossover between said theories, but these are our best clues as to the terrible truth behind this surreal series. Let's start with the most obvious answer that we think. It's a reality bubble created by Wanda Maximoff. So after the tragic losses of both her brother, Pietro, and the love of her life, the Vision, Wanda didn't quite get the closure that other characters did at the end of the Avengers Endgame, and after a life marked by tragedy, including the death of her parents at the hands of Tony Stark's weapons, and being a human guinea pig for Hydra, she she deserves a happy ending, the likes of which she probably only knows from television. Now, the Scarlet Witch is perhaps the most powerful Avenger of them all. When she arrives in Infinity War, she not only takes out Thanos' army like they're nothing, but she's powerful enough to destroy the Mind Stone. Kevin Feige went on record in a comicbook.com interview, revealing that she could have taken Thanos down single-handedly in Endgame, had he not nuked her from orbit. So clearly, Wanda has the raw power to transform an entire suburb into the world where she, as as Agnes puts it, is the star of the show. Wanda is the star, the director, and the editor of the TV show in which she's living. We've seen it when she chokes out Mr. Hart for going off script in episode one, when she rewinds reality when the sword beekeeper emerges from the sewers in episode two, and in the weird conversation blip in episode three. When the vision gets a little bit too close for the truth, but the subset of this theory asks whether Wanda's really the one behind this. After all, in episode two, a sword agent asks through the radio, Wanda, who's doing this to you? Now, the most popular theory is Mephisto. As we all know, the demon Mephisto could be anyone from Dottie to Wanda's dead brother, Quicksilver, to a series of animals, like the lobster, Sienna or Scratchy, the rabbit, the stork, and maybe even Sparky, as teased in the upcoming episodes, he's a dog. Now, the demon has ties to WandaVision, and most importantly, their children in the comics. And this would make a ton of sense, narratively speaking, because he also has many connections to Spider-Man and Doctor Strange, whose upcoming movies will also directly tie into the events of WandaVision. Now, the second candidate is Nightmare. He's a Marvel villain who's the evil ruler of the dream dimension, drawing power from the psychic energy derived from sleeping beings. Now, if he has wandered trapped inside of a dream and is using her reality, warping powers as a conduit to maybe project her dreaming subconscious into our plane of existence, then it's no wonder we're gonna need the likes of Doctor Strange to come to her rescue in the multiverse of madness. And last but not least, we have another familiar face from the Marvel Cinematic Universe, Dormammu. Now, we first met this dark dimension denizen in Doctor Strange, where the Sorcerer Supreme trapped him in a time loop to stop him from taking over the world. And as we explained earlier this month, there's a comic book precedent for this Avengers Defenders War that could tie together not just WandaVision, Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness, and Spider-Man 3, but Eternals and Loki as well. Now of the three, this does feel like the least likely, but what if Wanda isn't the end goal here? And what if Westview is actually a prison for all sorts of people with powerful magical abilities? As we saw in episode three, Westview is surrounded by a mysterious force field as as well as a small army of sword agents, and as a reminder, the sword in the MCU stands for Sentient Weapon Observation and Response Division. So it makes sense they'd want to keep tabs on people who are living weapons, like Wanda Maximoff and the Vision. Now this theory posits that rather than Wanda keeping Sword out, Sword is trying to keep Wanda contained in Westview while they figure out what's really going on here and who's manipulating her. Perhaps if Wanda's power goes unchecked, all of Earth can get sucked into her weirdo TV realm, but much like the commercials that run through each episode, the flip side of this theory harkens back to Wanda's past. Hydra could be behind this. Many of the characters in WandaVision, like Agnes, Herb, and Dottie, do have powerful comic book counterparts, and Hydra could be impersonating them. Agnes is almost certainly the witch act of the Harkness. Herb could be the skilled geneticist. Herbert Wyndham, aka the High Evolutionary, and Dottie might actually be Arcana, a powerful magic-using superhero from the Squadron Supreme, a supergroup from a parallel reality which is convenient 
convenient because we're heading towards the multiverse. Now, as we learn from Captain America, the Winter Soldier and Avengers Age of Ultron, Wanda and Pietro were Hydra's guinea pigs in their youth. Baron Von Strucker used the Mind Stone and Case in Loki's Scepter to amplify and draw out their innate superhuman abilities. And while Hydra has been quiet for a little while now, we do know they're still up there and up to no good. So perhaps they've been biding their time and now they want to reclaim their old living weapon, Wanda Maximoff? Last but not least, we've come to option number three to explain what's really going on in the world of WandaVision. They're all dead. Well, everyone except Wanda. As we know, Vision is extremely dead and reports about a deleted endgame post credit scene where Wanda recovers Vision's body means that she's using her hex magic for a deeply upsetting weekend at Bernie's situation. <laughs> but what if Wanda is also doing that with an entire town? What if her grief is so powerful that she turned the suburb of Westview into a magical necropolis? Now, Herb seems like he's on the verge of spilling the beans in episode three. He's about to break down and tell exactly what's going on there, saying about Geraldine that she came here because we're all, but Agnes cuts him off. We're all, what? Herb? Trapped inside of here? Yeah, we know. That's pretty clear. We're all powerful magic users, maybe. Or is it that we're all dead? Meaning they couldn't leave if they wanted to because Wanda won't let them rest. Or if Wanda found out, they would die again and lose their second lease on life since Geraldine is alive and well. It makes sense why they might be concerned that Wanda is talking to her, because if she puts two and two together, they might shuffle off this mortal coil. Now, beside all of that episode, one is called Filmed Before a Live Audience, a reference to the fact that, like a sitcom, they actually filmed that episode in front of a live audience. <laughs> but that audience and the intruders like Geraldine could be the only thing alive about Westview, if this theory proves correct. And, of course, that is a big if of these three theories. I think this one's the weakest. I think the strongest is actually the first option about reality bubbles and someone more powerful than Wanda pulling her strings. I think that's the most plausible, but I do love how genuinely bunk wild some of the theories are about this show. Now, as for season two, WandaVision season two is probably coming in 2022 on Disney+. Plus. Elizabeth Olsen revealed that the new season is currently being planned. She also hints that Doctor Strange 2 won't continue the series story. This is the first Disney Plus MCU show, and it started phase four of the Marvel Cinematic Universe on January 15th, 2021. It's also going to set off a showroom of the year for the studio that will see Marvel releasing multiple shows and four movies in 2021. All will be in a traditional Marvel fashion, part of the same related synopsis. So WandaVision will lead into the Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness, similar to the Spider-Man Far From Home sequel. There are some shows that, while always interconnected, are being built with multiple seasons in mind. So it'll vary the way a lot of, I think, great TV now varies, whether it's a couple of years between seasons of Game of Thrones or Stranger Things or a one-off like, what was it I just watched? Yeah, Queen's Gambit. One of the fun things about streaming is the rules are loose, which allows you to just follow creatively where you want to go. WandaVision blends the style of classic sitcoms with the Marvel Cinematic Universe in which Wanda Maximoff and Vision, two superpowered beings living their ideal suburban lives, begin to suspect that everything is not as it seems. And that wraps up the video. Thanks for watching.